Christmas came early. We got our V-mount kit in the mail today. So this thing's really sweet looking. And uh, for being the uh, $800 kit instead of the $3,000 one, this thing looks really nice. All the welds look superior, nicely TIG welded. All the fins are super nice, they're not bent up or anything. So this uh, V-mount kit will put the radiator at an angle. So imagine this is the engine side, it's gonna swoop down like this, which is why the hoses are on this side, both of them. And then that's gonna sit flush on top. We got all of our mounting brackets for that. Also got the R1 bumper lip on here, just kind of shorten the car a little bit, uh, bring it down to the ground because when we do put some fitting tires on here, unfortunately they stick out so far, gonna have to raise the car up and I refuse to roll these fenders. So uh, that'll just give a little bit of ground effect so I figure out what I'm doing with my wheels, but it looks cool anyways. And this is our rebuilt turbo. So this is the GT3574, essentially a GT35R but a journal bearing. Now I mentioned earlier I thought I saw some scrape marks inside the turbine housing, which they were, but not from the compressor wheels. When this thing was bored out to fit the larger compressor wheel, they just left some scuffing in there. So they went through the turbo, just made sure everything was good. we we'll put all new oil seals in it. It's ready to rock. Super cheap rebuild, 240 bucks. I mean, you can't beat that. Then we got our uh, elbows for all the intercooler piping. Got the blow-off valve, V-band clamp for the turbo. Alrighty, we got the fans mounted to the radiator. So I'm just gonna go over what I do to make the uh, CX Racing slash Rotor Extreme kit work. These are the stock fans off the FD. So the first problem you're gonna have is that, uh, now when you buy this kit, you gotta understand it's cheaper, you're gonna have to modify it. But the first problem I had is, uh, it just really doesn't fit in there well. The fans had slide at an angle into these little pieces where the feet are, and then it would theoretically lay flat down where you would bolt it in. The problem is that this uh, new fitting right here to change the angle of the radiator hoses, it's right in the way, and you can see that this actually goes underneath it, so you can't put it flat down. You actually have to take this thing, and uh, pencil grind is gonna be your best friend. Pencil grind this out to fit here. Pencil grind that out to fit there. And what you actually need to do is you need to take it, well also you need a pencil grind, make sure you can get the feet inside here, so I had to pencil grind that out, that, that, to get it inside. So after you get that thing ready, you actually have to put it in forward like this, and you, actually, you have to hammer these backwards, you have to bend them, get the front of this where it can bolt on, then you hammer these back in, and it clamps it in place. Now the only problem is that you can only get one bolt in here, but you can see there's, this thing's not going anywhere. I mean, it is so jammed in there. You have to use a pry bar to get it out from there. The other thing I didn't like is that uh, it comes with this plastic drain fitting for the bottom of the radiator, which good idea in theory, but it's plastic. You know it's gonna leak. A lot of people have problems with them. So this is just a pipe thread style. So what I've got here is uh, something we had sitting around. And basically this will thread into the radiator. It's got a ball valve on the inside, so there's closed. Now I'm going to see how far it hangs down in the car, but I mean, you really have to, you really have to smack it for it to actually open, so I'm not worried about any debris in the road just coming and flipping it up. I mean, it actually takes some strength. So, just little tips and tricks for installing this kit. Alright, so I have to get your radiator fixed. You can call underneath your car, you can find some uh, hillbilly wiring. They don't give you the right size bolts in the kit, which kind of happens everywhere. You got a lot, have a lot of M6, 8s, and 10s sitting around. Uh, they don't give you the right size bolts put in this side. They do give you the right size bolts put in here, but they're so cheap I wouldn't use them. Here's one of the bolts, it's actually a hollow head. I mean, it's junk. I throw that away, get a nicer, maybe a flange style bolt. That's what I've been using, so. You're gonna need the right size bolts for that. Change the bolts over there. And then this bar goes across the uh, front bumper. I put uh, nicer bolts in there. So you remove the old bar, you put that one in, and these brackets go like that. Alrighty, we got the radiator manhandled in here. And honestly, so far, I don't see why people are taking their bumpers off. All you gotta do is kinda shuffle the radiator under 
use your uh, knee to hold it and uh, just kind of start the bolts on that side there, that one there, and then these top pieces. So it turns out that this bracket bolts through the top piece and the mounting point on the frame. Um, the only problem with this kit is that they don't have any instructions, so I kind of relied on the RX-7 for them uh, to see which way these brackets go. So I'm not quite sure these two brackets, if uh, the slotted, if the slotted side should be over here or over here. Right now, I'm kind of thinking it should be flipped the other way because there's a lot of gap going on. But uh, we'll see once we get the intercooler in here and we'll see how everything fits because this top section needs to touch basically the bottom of the intercooler to make that V and to prevent air from escaping through here. So I'm going to test fit the intercooler now. Alrighty, quick update. So we got this bracket on here. The intercooler is mounted, just loosely anyways. So what I found is if you want to use the entire CX Racing kit, it ain't going to work. You see this long piece here where the uh, wastegate would mount? Uh, I guess if you cut this thing down, it might fit, but look at the angles there. Just not going to work even with rubber boots. You'd have to shuffle things. I feel like my uh, piece right here is welded more angling that way than in the pictures. In the pictures it looked a little more straight. But even if it was straight, I mean, just barely would fit. So I don't even care because what I've been planning to do the whole time is uh, I just put this in here to mock it up, see what uh, it looks like underneath. Which, if you look in here, I do need to move this relay uh, panel because it's right where the intercooler mounts. But we've got a little bit of a gap back there, which is not good. So we got to plug that. So what we're going to do is I wanted to cool their intake for the turbo which it's gonna come out here so we're gonna shuffle the whole intercooler over see this is gonna fit right up against here really nice so just have to make a new bracket here and then we'll just have to probably shuffle these brackets over no big deal just drill a couple holes so that'll shuffle this all the way over it's gonna make this piping work a lot better imagine that shuffled over it's almost gonna be perfect so and then realistically what you'd want to do is make some shrouding because right now the air might go passing up into here so that'd be a project for a later date right now we're trying to get it running get it on the dyno so we'll start uh, shuffling that thing over alrighty we have the intercooler pipes all welded up so I spent the last couple nights making all the uh, pipes that fit perfect and make sure they're all square facing each other, which sucked. I basically cut the outlets off of this. Remember they were facing kind of that one was that way. This one was more this way. Cut them, angled them where I needed to along with some pipes to connect here to there and here to there. Got them fit perfect and just tack weld them in place. Everybody shop had them TIG weld it. Came out beautiful. So. What I'm doing right now is uh, clocking the turbo. By clocking means where it's at in rotation, kind of like a clock spins. When they're loose, you can actually spin this thing in any direction you want, 360. And what holds it in is just a, a flange that bolts on to this, catches the lip, bolts into here, so it just kind of presses up against there. So you put it wherever you want. I basically have the worst combination set up here. I got a long runner manifold, which means that the turbo is uh, really far forward actually in front of the engine a hair and good for power band but the short runners of turbos way back here out of the way well since it's so close and i've got the v mount setup which kind of pushes the intercooler you know if i had the intercooler way up front you have plenty of pipe to get it nice straight put it on but since i got the v mount i had such a short distance the only possible way to do this was to cut this move it get them pretty good Side's pretty good, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bolt the turbo up just like that. My first car, my latest car. So the V-mount is 100% done. We've got her installed, ready to rock. I've got all the pipes TIG welded from a buddy, same guy that did my Jeep radiator. 
So it was kind of neat. I was able to put on a welding helmet and watch him do it. Learned a little bit about uh, TIG welding, so that was fun. So basically what we got going here is uh, we cut these pipes, both sides, and I had to re-angle them for what we were doing. My problem was that, yes, it's a universal kit, and it would have worked if I had a turbo that was mounted further back here, what they, what they call a short runner manifold. And we got that on, and I slid it over. That way we'd have a ram air intake for the turbo, because I wanted to filter on the turbo. I don't understand why people don't run them. I mean, one little rock chip's all it takes to destroy the turbine wheel. So the intercooler piping is three inch all the way. The inlet for the turbo is a four inch. And what we did is I bought two Spectre 90 degree pieces and I cut them to fit. Got one TIG welded right there to the other. So we've got that going on and I've also got the band clamp holding this on. So what we're probably gonna do is make a shroud system. Uh, I don't know if I'm, I'm at least going to try to cover up maybe this little section, but we're definitely going to need a shroud for these side pieces because the, the air is just going to go right through there. Same thing with here, I mean, and i got to fix this situation. So we got to do that, and I'm also going to make a skid plate for the radiator. You see how low that thing hangs, which it's normal, and now the bumper lift I bought is going to sit down to about here. But I just don't like the fact that this is the first thing to scrape, so we're going to make something for that. And then when I do make a skid plate for that, I'm actually going to bolt it to the bumper, because right now, the whole thing flexes quite a bit. I don't like that, so... We got that done. We got an AST, also known as air separator tank. Gets the air out of the coolant system. So I've got that on there. I've got nice, fancy, uh, coated loom right there going to it. So basically the way this works is uh, this is the thermostat housing off the car. So this actually runs down to the middle of this. That's the cleanest way I could do it. And then uh, there's also a line that goes from the bottom of this can to the radiator down there. There's a little outlet. So that gets all that going. And then the overflow is at the top of this. So when it boils up, it goes to the overflow, tanks over there. So we've got that going for us. We've got the turbo excess uh, style blow off valve, super loud, pretty neat.